I've been a consistently profitable trader for quite a long time now and by far and away the most powerful tool that I've ever utilized in terms of technical analysis has been my understanding of liquidity and how it works on the chart and why it's useful. In this video, I'm going to give you my understanding of liquidity for free and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know just how to utilize it, what it is and by the way, this could help you no matter what trading system you're using. It doesn't matter what you're using. You could be looking at indicators, you could be looking at smart money concepts, you could be doing whatever you want, and anything can be bettered by an understanding of liquidity. This is, again, in my opinion, the, without a doubt, hands down, most influential and most important concept on the charts for you to understand. And this is just going to be an introduction about liquidity and how you can anticipate things to be ran and what you should be looking at when you think about it. But if you want to learn more from me, like how I'm actually getting entries based off of this stuff, the rest of my trading system, the things that I'm thinking about when I'm in the markets, more logic floor. If you just like my teaching style, go ahead and join the discord down in this video's description. Like I said, I'm giving this video away for free just because this has been the most useful understanding for me and this has elevated my own trading to a very high extent and for that drop a like on this video subscribe do a little bit for me in return and without further ado let's get to the charts so let's go ahead and first answer the question what is liquidity because this is probably the question that's on people's mind right now what is liquidity and why is it even useful why are you saying that this is the most influential piece of technical analysis that you've ever seen why are you even saying that it could help me no matter what my system is that doesn't make sense so the great thing about liquidity is that it's not even technical analysis. You could use it on the chart and it's going to be very applicable on the chart. But the reason it's so powerful is because it's a deep rooted and ingrained part of the market. It is not a thing where we look at the marketplace and say, oh, this might be real. It might not be. Liquidity is real and it is a actual thing in the marketplace. Liquidity is simply for the purposes of technical analysis how much money is resting in orders at any given price level. So let's take this example here just so that you could understand what I just said. Let's say that I wanted to buy $10,000 of any asset at the price level 14,550.25. For me to get filled at 14,550.25, there needs to be $10,000 worth of sell orders also at 14,550.25. And if there's not $10,000 worth of sell orders at 14,550.25, price will move up to seek more liquidity and fill you higher if you're market ordering. Or if you have a limit order at 14,550.25, price touches down to your limit order and pulls up. If there was not enough counter orders, if there was not enough opposing orders of the opposite type, if you're buying, if there was not enough sell orders at that price level, you're going to get partially filled. You're not going to get fully filled. So let's go ahead and go through a couple examples here. And I promise we'll get to the actual charts in a minute and show you how this is applicable. But you must absolutely must understand the theoretical part to this for you to really, really appreciate how powerful this understanding and how powerful this concept is on the chart. When I learned about liquidity, it dramatically changed my trading. It dramatically increased my win rate. It dramatically increased my risk reward. It dramatically increased my understanding of the markets because this tool is so powerful, but you have to understand the theoretical layer first. So let's take an example like this. Let's say you have a buy limit order at 14,550.25 right here. Okay. And these red numbers on the side represent the amount of opposing orders at that price level. So right now at 14,550.25, there's 10,000 worth of sell orders sitting there. So if price is trading up here and you trade down, boom, price taps that 550.25 level, everything's going to be good and said, you're going to get fully filled and all that $10,000 worth of liquidity is going to be eaten up. So in this example, you would get fully filled at 14,550.25, no issues. You would have no partial fills. You would have no slips. You have nothing. You would get filled exactly at 550.25. But let's take this one step further. Let's imagine you're in the same scenario, but there's only $5,000 worth of opposing liquidity at 5,050.25. Now, if you have a limit order there and price touches it and pulls up, you're only going to get filled with half your order here. And what's going to happen is this is going to get destroyed. This liquidity is gone and you're only going to get filled with half your order if you were a limit order. Let's say that you had market ordered at 14,550.25. Market ordered long 
at 15 or at 14, 5, 50, 25. You would eat up all this liquidity and you would eat up $5,000 worth of this liquidity before you were filled. And your, average, and your average fill price would go up to here. Now let's take that example to the extreme. Let's say that you wanted to buy $45,000 worth of this asset at 14, 5, 50, 25 right here. And you market ordered long at 14, 5, 50, 25. You would eat up this price level, then you would have 10,000, you have 35,000 left to get filled. You'd eat up this price level, you'd eat up this one, you'd eat up this one, and you would eat up $5,000 worth of this one. And so if you market ordered long here, you would get slippage and you would actually only be filled, you, your fill would be averaged out. So you would only actually be filled likely up here because you would cause price to move up to here with your order. This is why price moves. When there's a lack of liquidity, price gaps to the next spot that there is liquidity, okay? So if I went long here, market ordered long $45,000 here, you would eat all the liquidity all the way up to here and you would eat half of the $10,000 here and your actual order would likely only be filled up here. Now reverse what I just said for the other side when you're shorting. So the question becomes, if big money, smart money, if you will, needs liquidity to be filled on their orders, then wouldn't it make sense for them to make price seek out areas where there's high liquidity? Because not in reality, not every price level is the same. There might be $10,000 on this price level, but there might be $500,000 on this level. And there might be $0 on this level, right? So if I want to trade with a massive amount of money and the people that are controlling the markets, the things that move the markets are individuals, banks, institutions, anything like that, with an extremely large amount of money, hedge funds, those people, wouldn't it make sense for them to seek out liquidity in the marketplace? Wouldn't it make sense for them to make, make price trade to areas with a lot of liquidity? So if there's a billion dollars worth of liquidity here and they want to short, let's say they want to short and price is trading right here. They can't just market order short at this level where there's only $10,000 because then they'll move the market down and their actual fill will be way down here. And that's not, that's not, a, that's not exactly what they want to see. But let's imagine now that they want to go short, that they want to go short again, but they want to go short with over, let's say $10 million. Well, wouldn't it make sense for them to make price reach up to where there's enough liquidity so when then they when they hit that short button, they're going to get a fill at that level and then price is going to dump because there's enough liquidity there to fill their short orders. There's enough opposing buy orders there to fill their short orders. Well, why would there be buy orders resting so high up? How does buy orders sit above price and how does sell orders sit below price? Enter buy stops and sell stops. Stop losses. The market will gravitate towards stop losses. Let's go into the actual chart and start taking a look at this because this is where the power of this actually starts coming in and you're going to see how influential and how powerful this is for price. Alrighty, let's take a look at this example of the chart. This is the daily chart on NASDAQ from October 2020 to where it was at all time highs. So what I just told you was this idea that price will usually try to target liquidity before it wants to go somewhere. So let's take a look at this price action up here. So let me move this back. Let's say you're sitting here and I'm a trader with a billion dollars that wants to go long. I want to long this market because I think this market is going to go higher. Okay. I think price is going to trade higher. Well, wouldn't it make a lot of sense for me to try to seek out enough liquidity so that I could get a beneficial fill? Intro to buy stops and sell stops. Why are stop losses important? What, what, what does that even mean? What are stop losses? Stop losses are opposing orders. So if I go long here and I put my stop loss here, my stop loss is a sell order, okay? So if I go long, let's say I'm long in this area and I'm long with $500 and I put my stop loss at 15,732.75 here, this is going to be a sell order for $500, okay? It's going to be exactly opposing. So all of a sudden, we have sell orders underneath price, hence the word 
cell stops. These are cell stops. That's what they're referred to as. And they exist underneath price action. Well, people and human beings are very, very predictable. If I ask you the question, where do you put stop losses? Your answer is going to be underneath old lows when I'm long and above old highs when I'm going short. So if I'm in this market and I want price to continue going higher, I, and I had a lot of money to go long with, and I wanted to get a good fill, wouldn't it make a lot of sense for me to trade underneath old lows? Watch. Price comes down, hits this level, trades back up. I have a lot of money, I want to go long. Where's the stop losses of the people that bought here underneath this low? So before we continue into new highs, what do we do? We sweep that low, stopping all of these people out, flooding the marketplace with sell orders, which allows big money to get long here and get a good fill in the marketplace. Okay, cool. We make a new high. Well, now we want to go higher. Price is trading around here, trading around here. What is it doing? It's generating more and more and more stop losses below these lows. And before the market goes higher, we run those lows. And when we run those lows, everybody that was long in this range gets stopped out. And when they get stopped out, it floods the marketplace with sell orders, allowing big money to get long with a good price. Okay, let's see again. The market falls down this time. We still think the market's going to go up. Where's the stop losses exist in this moment? Well, there would be stop losses down here. Underneath every old low, there would be stop losses here. There would be stop losses here, right? So if I'm, if I have a billion dollars, I want to go long inside of here. The vast, where I know and where I could guarantee there will be enough liquidity for me to get filled is underneath old lows when I want to go long, because that's where sell stops are going to exist. So before I want to go, I don't want to ladder the move. I don't want to do something like that. No, I want to take out these lows and I want to sweep the liquidity under them so that I could get filled long. Now you have to have a bias for this because there is going to be a time where you stop sweeping and you actually continue. Just like if you're moving up, you're not going to just trade above old highs and dip and trade above old highs and dip. No, you're going to trade above old highs and continue. But if you're moving up, you're going to be sweeping old lows and utilizing them as liquidity. And when you start moving down, you're going to start sweeping old highs and using those as liquidity to continue lower. But if I wanted to go long in this area, there would be some stop losses here. There would be some stop losses here. There would be some stop losses here. To sweep the most amount of liquidity, I could take all of the lows. And then I would be guaranteeing that, hey, on every single one of these lows, more and more and more and more people are going to be pairing those sell stop orders with new long orders. People with a lot of money in the market are going to be doing that. We push down, push down, push down. And we finally sweep the final low and then and only then is the market going to run. Okay. And we reach down to the final level of liquidity. Why are we reaching for liquidity? Why are we trying to stop people out? Well, it, think about it. It makes sense. If you had a fuck ton of money and you tried to just go long right here, you might push the market up, but your fill is going to be way up here because you've just utilized all the liquidity there. But there's going to be so a tremendous amount of liquidity underneath old lows, especially on a high time frame. We'll talk about exactly how to identify uh, high probability areas where there's going to be a lot of liquidity in a minute. But there's going to be the majority of liquidity below old lows. So the market's going to try to target there. And when it does, that is exactly where, quote unquote, big money is getting filled. That's where your billion dollar orders are getting filled. That's where your multi-billion dollar orders are getting filled because there's so much liquidity in the form of stop losses underneath old lows. And we can look at the same thing with old highs. So let's play this market forward. And that was at all-time highs. So let's start to look at what happened when we got to all-time highs and what started happening. Well, we got to all-time highs. Okay. This was the all-time high. And then look at what happened. Let's fall down. What is this? In a normal trader's mind, not me and you, in a normal trader mind, this is resistance. In the books and everything like that, it teaches you to place your stop loss above resistance. So if I'm the average trader 
which you have to think. You might not think there's a lot of people like this. There is millions, hundreds of millions of people like this that will say the market is holding resistance. Let's go short. It's laddering down. Let's go short. Where are we putting your stop losses? Above here. If it breaks above this high, we're moving up. So I'm going to put my stop loss right here. Okay. Or anywhere above this high, this is where I'm going to put my stop loss at. I'm going to go short somewhere down here. I'm going to put my stop loss above that. Well, if now I think that the market's actually going to go down, wouldn't it make sense if I was big money? I can't just short here because my order will be averaged out because there's not enough liquidity here. But I know that there's buy stops above here. When I go short and put a stop loss above here, if I sell here, it puts a buy order at my stop loss. So I know that there's going to be a huge collection of buy stop orders above these highs because I know that this is where the average person is putting their stop loss. So before the market goes down, it would be beneficial for me as a trader that has a tremendous amount of money to try to run the market above these highs so that I could sell short getting filled by other people's stop losses and that's exactly what happens the market runs those highs before it dips down why would it do that that doesn't make sense it does though because this is exactly where big money is getting their orders filled getting filled at the high you could think about this period of time as the generation of liquidity it's engineering people to put their stop losses above this high so that when price runs that high, you, the people with big money could sell off their buy stops. Okay. Does that make sense? Sell stops, buy stops. Now watch how this market continues lower. Okay. On a lower time frame, we create highs here. Right here. We just ran these ones. So let's take this high. We ran this entire area. Price got sold off. We fall down, we create a new high. Uh, we can dip down. Price sweeps that before continuing lower. And what is this? And then there's also a fair value gap here. Um, and an inversion fair value gap right here. You guys probably don't know about that. If you want to know about that, join my free Discord down in the description. There's a lot more to this. And if, as I said, I'm only teaching liquidity in this video. Um, price runs above this high before it continues down in order to do what? in order to stop out people with stop losses above this high so that people with big money could go short. Press play. Price falls down. Look at what's happening in the move. Drop down. Look at what's happening in, in the move as this goes. Almost every single time this thing gets sold off, this just got sold off up here over top of the old high you come in here this entire generation of liquidity where there's equal highs it's always it's just going to run and sell it off there's a ton of highs here you have equal highs you have a new high here it's going to get sold off off of that boom it gets sold off it's always running old highs before selling off and we could exit this out bring it back to here and notice that this entire range like this was the last high that got swept this is a new high that got created okay price sells off lower Where's the, where's the vast majority of liquidity? It's resting above here. So where does price run to before it sells? It runs just a few ticks above that high so that these people could get stopped out. The market is then flooded, flooded with sell stops or with buy stops so that people who want to short with big money can go short right there. And they do. And they do. And then look, a new high gets created right here. On a lower time frame, this is going to be relative equal highs. And that's how you're really going to be identifying liquidity, by the way. You're going to be looking for relative equal highs. What does that mean? Anything that, uh, anything that the normal trader would look at as resistance. Okay. That's what you're trying to target. You're trying to target their stop losses. So you have equal highs here. For the normal trader, this would look like, oh, this is resistance. This, I'm going to go short down here and put my stop loss above this. Okay, but guess what's going to happen? You're going to get stopped out by a tick and it's going to go down, right? Price seeks those stop losses. It seeks out liquidity so that big money could short. Okay, let's go back on the daily. And this isn't specific daily. This happens on every time frame. Where's the most liquidity resting now on this daily chart currently? Well, we have a bunch of equal highs up here, don't we? And we have a bunch of equal highs here. So... 
it would make sense to eventually come target that if we're going to continue lower. Look at what just got created. We had equal highs here before the market continued lower. Look at what happened. We ran those highs, took liquidity, sold off. But we still have stuff up here, so we could still expect the market to run up there eventually. Market runs. What do we sweep before we continue lower? We sweep liquidity, right? Where do we run to? We run above these highs because these are relative equal highs on the daily. This is where a large amount of stop losses are because before this, prior to this, people would look at this and say, oh, there's resistance here. I'm just going to go short on this order block. I'm going to go short in this fair value cap. I'm going to go. Anybody that was short from inside here off of this daily, for example, will have their stop loss above here. Anybody that was short trying to play off this trend, if they're very long term traders, they'll have their stop loss above this high. They'll have their stop loss above this high, um, et cetera. So market will run above those highs before it continues. Now it could break this low. Now it could continue lower because it took liquidity. Does that make sense? It should make sense. Okay, before this push up, what happened? Well, we had an old high right here. Market swept it before it ran up because it's it's running that old high to take liquidity so that big money can get short off their buy stops and it sells. Let's take a look at this on a lower time frame because it's, it's always going to be there, almost always. Drop down, drop down. You'll see what I'm talking about. Before this sells off, what does it generate? It generates a little range. People think that it's going down. They're going to spam stop losses above here. It's going to sweep it right before it falls off a cliff. Every time. At the very high up here, yes, we're sweeping external liquidity off that daily. But even on a low time frame, you see it gets set up again, right? It's swept external liquidity off the daily. And then it creates this downtrend. It, it starts to ladder down. You think it's going down. Boom, you get whipped out. Why? Because it's targeting your stop loss so that big money can get short. And then this becomes an opportunity to actually short off the re-entry. Okay. And I'm not talking about entries here. I'm trying to show you liquidity and start to have you expect and anticipate that the market will always run for liquidity. Okay. Uh, let's clear drawings here. And you see that back on the way up as well, right? Once we start moving up, we stop targeting highs as liquidity and we start targeting lows. And the way that you could start to understand this is like when you start to see highs being swept, but you're not breaking the lows, that's indicative of a, uh, of a potential reversal starting. So now look, you create relatively equal lows, which you know that there's going to be a large amount of stop losses under. Price sweeps that before going up. You create relatively equal note lows where you know that there's going to be a large, a large amount of stop losses. Uh, right underneath that, okay, price sweeps that before continuing going up. You create relative equal lows here, which you know there's going to be a lot of stop losses under, okay, price sweeps that before going up. And then on a higher time frame here, notice what's going on. You're just creating bigger equal lows on this chart, right? So you swept these, you started moving up again, but what does that create? That creates new lows. People are going to be looking at this as a double bottom. People are going to be saying, yeah, this is a double bottom. This is where price goes. But yeah, but they're going to put their fucking stop losses here. You know that, right? They're going to be trying to go long up here. They're going to say, oh, it just swept. It's time to put their stop losses below here. It creates more relatively equal lows. What does price do? It runs that aggressively before continuing up. Cool. And on its way down to there, look at what it's doing. Look at what it's doing on its way down. Sweeping old highs, using it as liquidity to sell off. Okay. Sweeping old highs, using it as liquidity to sell off. On a low time frame, remember this is a daily candle high. There's going to be a high here that it swipes before it, it sells off. Price runs up, low, sweeps before it actually runs up. So you see the process, you, you, you get it, right? Drop down on a lower time frame. You see it everywhere at all times, always. Before, if the market's moving up, it's going to want to target old lows before it moves up because that's where the liquidity is. Support, sweeps moves up. Okay. Old low before you're actually going to run sweeps it moves up. And the reason this is so powerful is it because if you could identify where that liquidity is going to sweep, you could say, Hey, I believe that the market's going to move up. For example, I think that you're going to run this low beforehand. Then you could get very high probability areas where you could go long. So I could go long here. And again, we're not talking about that 
in this video, we're not talking about entries or anything like that, but you should start to anticipate that the market will try to run for liquidity and the market will also generate liquidity at particular points. So let's, let's show an example of this idea of generation of liquidity. And I'll leave you with this. Let's imagine, and not even imagine, this is what I thought in the moment, I figured that price was going to run down into here. I was still bullish on NASDAQ in this case. I thought we were going to run up. I thought we were going to continue running higher. But I wanted to see price coming down into here. And more specifically, I wanted to see you come into this 16339 level. Well, if that's the case, then I want to see you have liquidity here. Where's liquidity? Well, it's below old lows and above old highs. So we have liquidity here in the form of stop losses. There's going to be stop losses below these lows. Below and above every low, there's going to be stop losses, right? We push and look at what we create. We create, even on a lower time frame, sometimes this is all you need. You create more equal lows. This is generational liquidity. So when you get right next to a point that you believe is going to reverse the marketplace, and you see lows being created like this, uh, equal lows, whatever, this is a great sign. You can see it on the way down. This is another example off the cuff, right? On your way down, before you start moving down, look at price action and what price action is doing, right? Before you start moving down, you start sweeping all ties. You create equal highs, you sweep them before you short, right? You create this entire range of price action, you completely sweep it before it sorts. You create this high, you sweep the high before it sells off. You create this high, you run up, you sweep it before it sells off. And now you're approaching a spot where on a higher time frame you think the trend will continue and you're generating equal lows. So what this is going to look for, uh, like for the average trader is that there's going to be a bunch of sell stops underneath here. So if I'm a uh, trader Terry or some shit and I have a hundred billion dollars, I'm going to go long. Well, I need to go long where there's stop losses. So at this point in time, we have a very old low where there's going to be a lot of stop losses. We have equal lows here where there's going to be a lot of stop losses and we have levels where liquidity will build up as well. And we're not going to be talking about liquidity building up on levels. We're not going to be talking about why there's liquidity provided at order blocks. We're not going to be talking about anything like that. If you want to learn more of that, again, join my discord uh, in the description. Now, in this case, this is exactly what you want to see. You want to see price aggressively run these lows. So you see this on a higher time frame, how price goes down to this level, but it runs the old low and it sweeps liquidity before it's able to go higher. And now we'll see that even on a lower time frame, look at this, we create equal lows right above this level. People are going to think this market's going to start running, right? Because it's starting to create lows. You go buy, 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 whatever. People are going to have their stop losses underneath this level. This level is going to provide liquidity. The old low is going to provide liquidity to go long. And every single time a new low gets swept, more and more big money participants are going to be buying up those stop losses, okay, at these points. And that's where the market's going to reverse. And then I want to show you something here. Watch how this starts to accumulate. And watch how the accumulation process is done. Okay. Look at this, right? And there's different timings. There's particular times of the day that liquidity is run. And again, if you want to learn more about that, you're going to have to join my Discord. This is just a basic introduction to liquidity. Um, at this time of the day, this is a time of day where liquidity gets generated. It gets generated. We already swept this, but we're in the accumulation process. So it's going to start accumulating and continuing to run. So anybody that was long up here, they have their stop loss down below here. So where does the market run for? It runs for their stop losses before it actually moves up. Okay. Press play. Continue this on. And notice how these two liquidity sweeps are causing the major moves because huge money is now in the marketplace. They now could actually get filled. Let's up this to a higher time frame here. Okay. Notice what's going on every single time. In this case, we ran down to things like an order block, which is valid. Before that, we created a low above where we stopped and we swept the low. Okay. Equal lows get created here swept liquidity taken before we could continue up bunch of lows created here equal lows created here swept before we continued running higher okay let's continue this as it continues you'll see that continue to play you see this all these lows that were created here well we think the market's going to go higher this is the major area of support that people would see but in my eyes and ideally in your eyes after this this is liquidity so if i'm a big money participant i want to go long 
I need to go long from down here. What did we sweep before this? Well, we need to go down before we could go up. So we sweep old highs as a liquidity pool. So now people are short up here. They need liquidity to take profits on and they also need new liquidity to go long on. So they take the opposing liquidity. Okay, simple as that. Press play. Look at what happens. You create an area that looks like support, a bunch of equal lows. You're going to go ahead and run those lows before price could go up and you trade down to the order block. Okay. And this level also provides liquidity. And we're not going to be talking about that again. Like I said, price pushes. Okay. Push up. Walk around. And notice that before every major run, we had this low, we swept it before this run up. Okay. We had this major low, we swept it before the run up. Okay. It's liquidity getting swept over and over and over and over again. We had these lows, we swept it before we continued running up. Okay. And it just happens time and time and time again, over and over and over again, especially intraday, especially at particular times of day. Okay. This happens at exact times of day. And you can know when it's going to happen. These equal lows get swept here. Boom. Paired with this liquidity up here. Let's drop down to a lower time frame now. Okay. Because this happens on all time frames at all times, right? We swept major liquidity here. Boom. In the accumulation process, we swept this. We swept again. Okay. Taking more liquidity off the books. Before this low gets created and put in, we sweep again. Okay. These lows get created. We sweep before we start moving up. Interior low gets created. We sweep before starting moving up. And the, remember, reverse this whole thing uh, to talk about the way down. And now, since we've already swept liquidity a ton, now we're pushing in a trending market environment you're not going to get liquidity sweeps as much because they already happened. So the big money's already in the market. So they're not interested in sweeping liquidity anymore. Right. And if you, again, if you want to learn more about when that's going to happen, when you're going to sweep versus when you're not going to sweep, again, join my discord down in my bio to learn more about that. And also, if you just want to learn more about my entire trading strategy, go ahead and join my discord. Um, this is just an introduction to liquidity, but I have a whole trading system that I teach, uh, I teach more about liquidity. This is a very basic intro to liquidity, um, but it's super powerful. And what I want you to get out of this video is to start expecting and anticipating price action to run towards liquidity. Stop being that person who's looking for the market to ladder and looking for the market to uh, hold off support and putting your stop loss there. You're part of the liquidity. You're part of it. And if your stop loss ever just gets wicked and then the market goes your direction, that's where I'm entering. OK, uh, again, if you want to learn exactly how I trade, if you want to learn more from me, if you like this video, if you like anything I'm doing, go ahead and like subscribe on this video um, and join my discord to learn more about how I look at these things. I need to go long from down here. What did we sweep before this? Well, we need to go down before we could go up. So we sweep old highs as a liquidity pool. So now people are short up here. They need liquidity to take profits on and they also need new liquidity to go long on. So they take the opposing liquidity. Okay. Simple as that. Press play. Look at what happens. You create an area that looks like support, a bunch of equal lows. You're going to go ahead and run those lows before price could go up and you trade down to the order block. Okay. And this level also provides liquidity. And we're not going to be talking about that again. Like I said, price pushes. Okay. Push up. Walk around. And notice that before every major run, we had this low, we swept it before this run up. Okay. We had this major low, we swept it before the run up. Okay. It's liquidity getting swept over and over and over and over again. We had these lows, we swept it before we continued running up. Okay. And it just happens time and time and time again, over and over and over again, especially intraday, especially at particular times of day. Okay. This happens at exact times of day. And you can know when it's going to happen. These equal lows get swept here. Boom. Paired with this liquidity up here. Let's drop down to a lower time frame now. Okay. Because this happens on all time frames at all times. Right. We swept major liquidity here. Boom. In the accumulation process, we swept this. We swept again. Okay. Taking more liquidity off the books. Before this low gets created and put in, we sweep again. Okay. These lows get created. We sweep before we start moving up. Interior low gets created. We sweep before starting moving up. And the, remember, reverse this whole thing uh, to talk about 
the way down. And now, since we've already swept liquidity a ton, now we're pushing in a trending market environment. You're not going to get liquidity sweeps as much because they already happened. So the big money's already in the market. So they're not interested in sweeping liquidity anymore. Right. And if you again, if you want to learn more about when that's going to happen, when you're going to sweep versus when you're not going to sweep again, join my discord down in my bio to learn more about that. And also, if you just want to learn more about my entire trading strategy, go ahead and join my discord. Um, this is just an introduction to liquidity, but I have a whole trading system that I teach. Uh, I teach more about liquidity. This is a very basic intro to liquidity, um, but it's super powerful. And what I want you to get out of this video is to start expecting and anticipating price action to run towards liquidity. Stop being that person who's looking for the market to ladder and looking for the market to uh, hold off support and putting your stop loss there. You're part of the liquidity. You're part of it. And if your stop loss ever just gets wicked and then the market goes your direction, that's where I'm entering. OK, uh, again, if you want to learn exactly how to trade, if you want to learn more from me, if you like this video, if you like anything I'm doing, go ahead and like subscribe on this video um, and join my discord to learn more about how I look at these things.